Hi. Um, I have some really unfortunate news that I feel is important to let you guys know about. Um, it's with a heavy heart and a great amount of regret um, that I have to report that my friend Neil Robinson, who you've heard me mention in many of my videos and whose videos you may have seen before, uh, Neil passed away this week uh, on Tuesday, August 9th after a short but really bravely fought battle against multiple myeloma, which is bone marrow cancer. Um, his death was sudden and unexpected, and uh, it was a shock to all of us. Um, I wanted to take the time to record this, not only just to let you guys know what happened, but also as a sort of tribute to Neil. Um, for me to talk about how I knew Neil, and the kinds of things we did, and the impact he had on my life. Neil discovered my YouTube channel in December of 2015. Um, he was a viewer of Dr. Cassette, who around that time had given me a shout out in one of his videos. And Neil took the opportunity to check me out, and he in turn subscribed to me. Not too long afterwards, he sent me a message on YouTube. He knew I lived in the province of New Brunswick. And he was like, hey, I live in New Brunswick too. I have an old computer here. If, you're, if you live near Fredericton, I'll give it to you for free. And he linked a picture and it was the Sharp PC 7000. And I was like, holy crap. Because here was this computer, presumably really rare, that I had never heard of before. And this stranger who lived just minutes away from me was offering it to me for free. I was nervous because I had never met a viewer in person before and he was a total stranger that could have had any intention in mind. But I was just so, uh, I don't like to say greedy, but I really can't think of a better word for it. But I just, I wanted this computer so bad that I just said screw it. And we set up a time for me to go to his place and pick it up. So later that day I called a taxi and I went to his house and I got the taxi to hold there because I, I just wanted to get in and get right back out. So I went up to his doorstep and knocked on his door and I was nervous and uh, after a moment the door opened and there was Neil in all of his uh, cheerful British glory. And he said, come in, come in, quick, before the cat gets out. That was always step one of visiting Neil. You had to get in his house quick enough before his cat evacuated. He, uh, he led me downstairs and to the computer, and he, he was like, I was so surprised when I found your YouTube channel because you live so close, and all I could think was, this guy's basically a younger version of me. And uh, what's funny is that it took me a couple of minutes to pick up on his British accent. I thought at first it was just a really severe lisp. And then it clicked in my head and I was like, are you from Great Britain? And he, he said, yeah, yeah, I'm from England. And I was like, oh, cool. While he was gathering up the computer for me, I took a look around his basement and what I saw was just unbelievable. I guess I explain it best in the video I made later that night. A guy who lives just minutes away from me uh, discovered me on YouTube and he messaged me today and told me he had this thing and he'd give it to me for free if I wanted it. The guy's a real gentleman. Um, his name is Neil and uh, my god he's got the hugest collection of vintage electronics I've ever seen. It's like me on crack. He has an amazing collection of stuff. So he gave me the computer and he said, I noticed those oscilloscopes you've got. I've been looking for one for a really long time, but they're expensive to get. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, since you, you're giving me this, I'll come down again and give you one of my scopes. Because I, I had two of them and I didn't need two oscilloscopes. And he's like, oh, that'd be fantastic. So I thanked him and we shook hands and I made my way home. And little did I know that was the first act of, honestly, one of the best friendships I've ever had. After Christmas in January, Neil and I set up a time so I could see him again and give him that Iwatsu oscilloscope that I had. So I bust it to his place and made it in the house again without letting the cat out. 
And this time I got to meet his partner, Margot, and I met his granddaughter, Anya, who's a very, uh, very sweet little girl and very, very intelligent. And I ended up staying there for three hours. Neil and I uh, sat at his workbench, me in his comfortable recliner chair with the heat of the furnace blowing on me, which felt awesome in that cold winter. And he showed me all the different cameras and camcorders and stereo equipment and the stuff he had. Man, it was just amazing. I was blown away by the stuff he had. He, to he, uh, he told me stories about his earlier life back in England. He, he actually did some really interesting stuff in his younger days. Uh, he studied either electrical engineering or at least an electrical engineering-like program in university. And uh, as I understand it, at one point for a few years, I think, if I remember right, I think he sold high-profile real estate, like really expensive like hotels and stuff or something like that. And uh, from how he described it, he was basically actually rich. But he told me he eventually blew his entire fortune on tons of stuff he didn't need. He bought Rolex watches and expensive clothes and tons of electronics, because that's what he liked. And he told me he spent off his entire fortune really quick. And eventually the work dried up and he had nothing left, except all the stuff he bought. And he told me, he said, when you have money like that someday, don't be stupid with it like I was. And I promised him I wouldn't. But he made out okay in the end. He worked for a few years afterwards as a streetlight technician, which is really cool. And over there in England, they have a lot of fluorescent streetlights. So he worked on quite a bit of those, I imagine. And then a little over 10 years ago, he moved here and the rest is history. Overall, we had a long and very enjoyable visit. I brought a few things of mine to show him and he gave me some more things to keep. The first Mavica camera, the DAT tape drive, which I accidentally broke and still have to fix, and a few other things. And it was just awesome. We already got along like we had known each other for years. And I couldn't wait to go back to see him again. Holy moly, what have I got here? Well, today I paid a visit to Neil, the guy who gave me the Sharp PC7000. And uh, he's actually cleaning shop a little bit. He's getting rid of a lot of stuff that he doesn't want anymore. So he offered some stuff to me, which uh, I gladly accepted. Thank you, Neil. I really appreciate it. And what I want you guys to do is check out his channel, because obviously he's interested in this stuff like I am, and he does have a few videos on this stuff. Not very many yet, but a few. And uh, I think very, I think um, at some point he's going to make a video of the oscilloscope that I gave him. Very cool. A little later, Neil found me on Facebook, so we became Facebook friends, which was awesome. Other than that, things were kind of stagnant for the next few months. I had to focus on school and then eventually start looking for a job. Uh, quite a while later in late April, once I was out of school, I hadn't been able to find a job, so it seemed uh, probable to me that I'd have to move back in with Mum for the summer. So I decided to expedite things. I messaged him on Facebook to see if he was up for a visit. And he said, sure, come on over. So the, ne the next day I did. That visit was a short one. Um, Neil didn't feel very good that day. He figured he was coming down with some sort of flu. He said his body kind of ached and he felt cold sometimes and he was just overall kind of yucky. Very, very flu-like. So I didn't stay long. I showed him my amateur radio transceiver and a couple other things and he gave me the second Mavica and a couple other things to keep. And we said, whatever, no matter. We'll uh, meet again some other time. So uh, we said our goodbyes and said we'd make plans for another time when he was over whatever he had and I headed home. Oh my goodness, look what the cat dragged in. Back in April, I paid a visit to my friend Neil who lives on the other side of the city and he gave me some more stuff just out of the kindness of his heart. So big thanks to Neil for these things. I really appreciate it. I love this stuff. It's funny because that night I figured, well, great, he's come down with the flu or whatever he has and whatever it is, I'll probably get it now too. 
but the next day came and went, and then the next, and then the day after that, and I never got sick. And I thought, that's kind of weird, and I figured, well, I guess I dodged a bullet there. My immune system was with me that time. And uh, it'd be quite a while later before I found out that he really wasn't coming down with the flu. A few days later, I got offered my job with the company I work for now. Neil was one of the first things I told, uh, one of the first people I told. I told him on Facebook. And he was like, oh, awesome. He said when we last met, when I was discussing my, uh, discussing my efforts with job hunting, he, he said he had a feeling I'd get something good. And he was right. And uh, he cheered me on. About a month passed after that without any communication between us aside from comments on YouTube and I was getting kind of antsy. I wanted to see him again. So I messaged him on Facebook. This was in late May and I asked if he'd be up for another visit. And uh, that's when he broke the news to me. Uh, the sickness he had been feeling when I last visited him uh, turned out to be this bone marrow cancer and uh, he was in the hospital getting treated for it. And uh, apparently just days after I had visited him, uh, he collapsed and he had to go in the ambulance. And he told me that apparently he was so close to death that once doctors had basically saved him, they were telling him how lucky he was to still be alive. But he did make it in the end. But uh, when I learned this news, it just, it totally destroyed me. I was kind of stunned and numb for the next couple of hours and all of a sudden I remembered what the word cancer actually meant and I was pretty much an emotional wreck for the rest of the weekend. I regained my wits about me a couple of days later and I messaged him and I asked what does the future of this look like? You know I had no clue what the outlook of this was like. And he said that they told him he should be fine in six to eight months of treatment. So I took that as it was and I just, I hoped and prayed that he'd get better. Over the next couple of months, we talked occasionally on Facebook. He was in and out of the hospital every week or every couple of weeks for his treatment. And while he was there, he sometimes would catch up on videos from his subscribers, including my videos video of mine he watched uh, while he was in the hospital once was my uh, the original video I made of my uh, uh, Handycam TRV66, my Hi8 XR Handycam and he loved that, he thought that was a really cool camcorder as you know Neil loved camcorders, he owned a few of them and he thought that that one of mine was just totally awesome so I knew what to bring with me uh, to show him next time I got the chance to visit him I just had to pray I'd get the chance. I did get that chance eventually in uh, mid-July. Neil was home and he was feeling relatively well and he'd recently acquired that IBM ThinkPad T60 he made a video about on his channel and he made a call for help on Facebook for someone to burn him a Linux Mint CD to install on his ThinkPad and uh, I said hey I'll do it so he said awesome and he invited me over for supper. Supper in Linux. So I did. And uh, I made it in the house without letting the cat out. And the first thing I noticed when I got there, having not seen him in a couple of months, was that Neil had lost a ton of weight. He was really thin now and he had, he'd grown a full beard, which I thought was kind of neat, but he was really thin. But he was otherwise as cheerful as he always was. I asked him if I could give him a hug and he said sure. So I hugged him and he said oh thank you. <laughs> and uh, I'm really glad I gave him that hug now. So I had supper with him and Margot which was great. They had just bought a new brand new barbecue to try out. And I got Linux Mint running on his sink pad which uh, he was grateful for. And uh, as you may remember I got to try out his JVC GRC1 camcorder for the first time. What What's so odd about this camcorder is the display indicators. It's just... The lack of. Yeah, the lack of. It's just, <laughs> it's just horizontal bars. That's right. They didn't really... They, they, they didn't give you many clues about what was going on. Yeah. Well, there's the uh, computer updated if you want to... 
after. There you go. Oh, I assume you don't want to be in the shot. Well, it doesn't matter if I'm in the shot a bit. Does this have autofocus? Does it have autofocus? I don't know. Mm. Oh no. No, you no. don't focus it yourself. My viewers will like this. I'll expect to see it in the next eight months or so. What's that? I'll expect to see it in the next eight months or so. Oh. Slow oh, I'll get it up tonight probably. It was an enjoyable visit. I was there for a couple of hours and I got to show him my Hi8 camcorder, which he liked. And I showed him one of the new Mavicas I got. And uh, it wasn't all good news though. Although he felt relatively well compared to uh, before, and he had put on a bit of weight compared to before, he told me the treatment they had him on wasn't working at all. But he said they offered to put him on a brand new treatment. Uh, I forget if it was still experimental or if it just came out of its experimental phase, but it was very new treatment, I think just approved for uh, use over here and he accepted that treatment so we still had a bit of hope to run on at least but overall we had a great visit and that evening they drove me home and he thanked me for getting his sync pad running and we said our goodbyes and said we'd make plans for another visit in the near future and uh... that was the last time I saw him alive the last time I spoke to him was on Facebook a few days later, a couple weeks ago, I asked him if he liked reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders, and he asked me why. And uh, I told him about this Panasonic reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder I saw at the ReStore for $65. Too expensive for me, but I told him if he wanted it, it was there. But uh, he never said anything more about it. And uh, that, that was the last time him and I ever spoke. On Monday, this Monday, I was home from work for lunch and I got a YouTube message from Margot and she asked me to call her and when I read that my heart just sank immediately. I knew right then and there it was because either Neil was about to die or he was already gone. So I called her and without much beating around the bush she let me know that he had passed away that morning. He was 55 years old. She didn't give me much detail except that it was unexpected. And as of recording this, I don't actually know what happened. Um, I don't know if he passed in his sleep or if it, how related, related it was to his cancer. Um, I just know that nobody was expecting it. Um, and uh, I, I just hope it took him quickly and I didn't go back to work that afternoon. Um, it's been a rough week. It's probably the most traumatic thing I've had to go through since Dad died, and that was seven years ago. I haven't slept well. I haven't been eating as much. It's been hard. I'm hanging in there, but it's been hard. And I know it's probably a lot harder on his family. Um, Neil was one of the most kind, genuine, and really fascinating people that I'd ever met. And I don't think I've ever connected with any friend like I did with him. I'm upset. And I'm hurt because I didn't get more time with him. We only met eight months ago, but every time I visited him, we talked like we'd known each other for years. And I can plainly see now, when I look back on our visits and on our conversations, I know that he loved me and I loved him. I'm glad I got to spend the time I had with him. I'll always cherish that. I never met someone who shared so much of my hobbies and interests. He had such a positive influence on my life. 
and I'm glad I was able to do the same for him. I was told that I fulfilled one of his lifelong dreams by giving him his own oscilloscope. That makes me happy. I feel it's important to let all of you know that you had a positive impact on Neil's life as well. All of you that watched and commented on his videos and subscribed to him or even just spoke to him or just mentioned him on any of my videos, that all brought joy to Neil too. Neil loved that people watched his YouTube videos. He had about 10 subscribers when we met and now he is almost 60 and he was so appreciative of every single one. Neil wanted to make a lot more videos. He had lots of videos planned for when he got better and that won't be able to happen now. But I think what he liked to do even more than make videos was see other people's videos. I regret now that I haven't yet made videos of the Sharp PC 7000 and the other things he gave me. I just, I let them slide down the totem pole and I kind of regret that now. He never saw the Sharp boot during the time he owned it and I know he would have liked to see that. I'll still make those videos in the future. There's a lot of things that I hope Neil can be remembered for. Um, he had a passion for technology, both new and old. He loved his vintage film cameras and his camcorders and his stereo equipment. He was an active member of both Audio Karma and Video Karma, and I think a couple other forums. And he wasn't a computer collector. He tried to be a computer collector, but he wasn't in the end. But he loved computers, and he was a big Linux advocate. And he loved music. He had a huge, very wide taste in music, much like myself. And he was excellent at repairing things, super skilled at taking apart really intricate devices like VCRs and camcorders. I can only hope that someday I can be as skilled as he at, as he was at uh, taking apart and fixing things like that. But uh, I think most of all, I want Neil to be remembered for the kind, genuine, and pure soul that he really was. He showed it online, but he especially showed it in person, in the way he treated everybody whether he knew them his whole life or only a few months. He was taken from us uh, way too soon. Um, and I'd give up everything I have to get one more chance to visit him so I could tell him how much he meant to me. But I know that's not possible. It's just the way it has to be, I guess. So, I guess instead, I'm gonna do what Neil, I'm sure what Neil would almost certainly tell me to do, if he could right now, which is to just keep pushing like hell, living my life just as best as I can, keep doing good things, keep following my passions and aspirations and continue to appreciate and cherish everything that I do have in my life and I will and all of you should too I was at Neil's funeral this afternoon it's a really nice service very simple there were about 50 people there give or take and uh, a few people went up and spoke for a few minutes about uh, how they knew Neil. I was offered the opportunity to speak uh, beforehand, which I uh, really appreciate, but I respectfully declined because I knew I wanted to make this, video, uh, this uh, recording and frankly, I don't think I have the emotional capacity to do it twice. Unfortunately for me, and I'm getting a bit selfish just for a moment, 
Um, unfortunately, Neil's death came at a really, with really bad timing um, for me. Um, the night before he passed, I had a really positive event occur in my life. And uh, it, it was the beginning of kind of a big ongoing personal change that I'm going to be undergoing in the future. Um, I'm still keeping it secret for now, but it's something that uh, I hope to uh, make public in the next few months. But I've I've had to put it all on hold for now. This has just totally drained me of any desire to do anything at the moment. But I'm determined to eventually pick up where I left off and keep going. I know that's what he would have wanted. It's been truly a, uh, a privilege to get to meet and be friends with Neil. I'm so glad that I overcame my fear of uh, meeting a total stranger, even if it was for kind of a selfish reason, reason just to get another computer I don't need. It was worth it in the end. I'm sad that he's gone, but I know that eventually these thoughts and feelings will pass and normal life will resume. It won't be the same without him, but it'll still be great. I see good things coming for me and everyone else in the future. And uh, I'm really happy and glad that I get to remain friends with Margo and the other members of his family that I've met. I think just to kind of wrap this up, uh, I'll just say that uh, what's probably a really good maxim to remember is that it's, uh, it's never goodbye. It's just see you later.